And what are the needs of the robot in operating model terms? From a people perspective, we know what people need. But what do the robots need? They need a robotic operating model architect. What is one of these? None of them exist at the moment in many organizations. And that is somebody that has done this before, that understands what a robotic operating model is, understands what the blue prism generic model looks like, and is able to help you as customers to translate that generic model into your op robotic operating model. Every robotic operating model I've seen has been subtly different because every organization is subtly different. So it's absolutely vital that you bring people into the organization who are able to bring that knowledge and skills. And that's either through uh, the partner network or through recruitment. Automation designers. We've got designers in IT, we always have. What are automation designers? These are the people that ensure you that you've got these reusable components that Dave Moss talked about earlier that can accelerate use and reduce total cost of ownership. These are the people that can reduce the maintenance mountain that the Nordea team were just talking about because they create these reusable, resilient, and scalable objects that are at the heart of every single process that gets implemented. So you write an object to log in to your customer system once, and then you've got that same object available every single process that needs to log in to your customer system. And if there's a change to that log on screen of the customer system, you change it, the object once, and it gets inherited by all of the processes. We learned that the hard way. I put my first 500 robot implementation into production in 2012. Nobody had learned all these lessons before, so we stumbled across every single challenge that you can possibly expect to stumble across because there was no path there. Nobody had stood on stage like this and like the Nordea team and like others and outlined their stories, their backstories to give you some guidance for the next steps. So we realized that we'd got our object uh, strategy wrong. So we thought, how do we make sure no one falls for that one? We need to put something in place. So we put in place the automation designers. We've got training programs for these people. We've got an accreditation uh, exam for these people. They're so important. So embed those in your team. Process developers, brackets configurator. Configurator is not a word. I know that. But if you say developer, there's a lot of connotations associated with that. That it'll be, oh, this has to sit in IT then, and it has to have people who know Java or .NET. But that's counterintuitive to the business-led ethos under which uh, RPA and Blue Prism is underpinned. So how do you find the right sort of people who are able to do this process development, this configuration? We've got the job specs. We've got the training uh, regimes, the training paths. We've got the accreditation. Everything's there. It's all on the Blue Prism portal. It's accessible to all of our customers and partners. So finding the right people, building the right team, the blueprint's there, you can use it. These automation managers and controllers, these are new. People have department heads and team leaders. Robots, they have these automation managers, these controllers who are, schedule the workload. These are the ones that can prevent, I love that slide, that the heartbeat slide with all the peaks and troughs. It's exactly what we see in early stage implementations. And then your automation management capability gets established and matured, and they level that out. So think of the sort of people that you're going to be bringing into your organization that can do that. 